Hello and welcome to another Cycle Ref TFM video, Fundamental Training for Marketers, brought to you by 3 Chilies, the experienced technology experts. In this tutorial, we're going to start the process of creating an email campaign. The Email Experience Manager, which by the way, moving forward I'll refer to as EXM, guides you through the process of creating and sending your email campaigns pretty well, but it's handy to know that you don't have to follow the force process from start to finish. For example, when you've created an email campaign, you can easily edit the content and add recipients at a later stage. Now in EXM you can create different kinds of emails. You've got the options of one-time messages, which is a straightforward email campaign, subscription messages, which you can use to create a message from an existing message. So if you made a newsletter last month and you're ready to send out the next newsletter, this will be the option that you choose. And we also have triggered messages, which is an email campaign that is triggered by an event or goal that you've set on your website. So you can use this type of message as part of an engagement plan. To create a new email campaign in EXM on the dashboard, click create and in the menu that appears in the create email campaign section, select the type that you want to create. In the dialog box that appears, click the template that you want to base your email campaign on and enter the name of your email in the name field. By default, EXM contains a number of predefined templates and import options. Let's take a quick look at what each option promises us. The first one is a HTML file. This is an email campaign based on imported HTML code for the message body. And for this, you can use any HTML file. Then we've got newsletters. This is a template with a link to the online version of the email campaign. It has a header and a footer along with links that go through to an opt-out page. A two-column template is a template with a two-column layout. It has a footer with links to opt-out pages. Similarly, the one-column template is a template with a one-column layout and it has a footer with links to opt-out pages. A simple HTML template is a HTML template with a predefined layout. Plain text is pretty much what it says on the tin. It's a plain text email without a predefined layout. And finally, the last option is quite an interesting one. This is a template based on a Sitecore web page. It allows you to select a page on your website to use as the message body. Now, as you'll know, some pages in Sitecore can be quite complex and security restrictions might apply to certain elements of the page too. For example, a page might contain a section that only registered users can see when they open that page of the website. Well, using this option, EXM allows you to define how email campaigns are created from web pages, and there are two options. The first option is to have EXM respect the security settings that you've got set up. In that case, recipients with different security privileges will receive different email campaigns, if the source page has security restrictions, that is. And the second option is for EXM to just ignore all security settings in which case EXM goes ahead and renders all elements on the page and all recipients receive exactly the same email campaign. So it's worth knowing about those security settings. Once you've selected the preferred template type, the new email campaign opens. On the general tab in the general information section and in the sender details section, edit the relevant fields. So I'm going to add a description here to help remind me of what this campaign is if I ever need to look back at it. I'll also change the campaign category of the email campaign in this field here. This is to specify a more suitable location for the campaign. To associate the email campaign with an actual site core campaign in the campaign group field, you would click the browse button and in the select campaign group dialog box that appears, navigate to the relevant campaign and click OK. We'll cover campaigns in a future video, so if you're not quite sure how they work yet, don't worry. You can just leave it blank for now. There's no cycle campaign associated with your email campaign by default. And then make sure that you're happy with the fields down here regarding your sender details. And if you are, go ahead and click Save, and then click on the next tab up in the process flow labeled Recipients, which is where we'll select who we want to send the message to. When you create an email campaign, you must include at least one recipient list for the message before you can send it. The tabs up here contain included recipient lists, which are obviously all the recipients that you want to send your email campaign to, and at least one of the included lists must contain at least one recipient, and excluded recipient lists, which are all of the recipients that should not receive your email campaign. You can include as many lists as you want, and don't worry if the same recipient appears multiple times in the included lists, EXM makes sure that the recipient only receives your email campaign once, so long as the contact has the same identifier, which is usually their email address. It's important to understand that a contact can only subscribe to an email campaign if a contact list is included in the email campaign. 
Contacts cannot subscribe to a segmented list because a segmented list is generated in real time according to defined rules. When a contact subscribes to an email campaign, they are added to the first contact list that is included in the email campaign. When a contact unsubscribes from an email campaign, they are removed from all lists included in the email campaign. If the unsubscribe is not successful or if the contact is a member of an included segmented list, the contact is added to a global opt-out list. This ensures that the contact doesn't receive any more email messages at all. To include or exclude an existing list, in the include list section or in the exclude list section, click the buttons up here to select the relevant lists. We'll choose this one that we made earlier, along with another one that we made a little while ago because we think the campaign is highly relevant to those people too. The list with matching names will then display accordingly. I don't personally want to exclude anyone from this email, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the exclude list blank. But if you did want to exclude certain people contained within other lists, I'd add those lists here using exactly the same process. All right, that's it for this tutorial. In the next one, we'll be continuing on with the campaign creation process by creating the actual message that we're going to be sending out to our clients. This video was brought to you by 3Chilies, the experienced technology experts. For more free cycle training videos, head over to 3chilies.co.uk forward slash training. Or if you'd like to organize a bespoke training day for your marketing team, email us or give us a ring. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you found this video useful.